Hello, my name is Melissa Daniels, and this is Strabismus to Stereopsis. On this channel, I talk all about Strabismus, which is when your eyes are not pointing in the same direction, and different solutions that can help you solve that problem. Sometimes when you have eyes that aren't pointing in the same direction, you get one eye that becomes lazy or weak, develops amblyopia, that's the official term. So this video is all about ways that you can wake up that lazy eye and get it to turn on. Before jumping into that, I want to make sure you know you can go over to learn.strabismussolutions.com. Over there, you can join the Strabismus support community where we are having a live call in about one week. So make sure that you are signed up for the community so you can be part of that free call. Then you can also do the course. You can sign up for Zoom calls. You can do the PDFs. You There's so much over there. Lots of resources if you have strabismus or amblyopia or lazy eye, whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's talk about how to wake up a lazy eye. First thing I want to say is that this is something that you don't want to do all at once, and you don't want to do it without the help and guidance of a professional. So I definitely recommend that you go to a vision therapy office and do this with professional help. If you don't have an office or don't know how to get an office, you can go over to strabismussolutions.com slash findvt, and I'll put a link in the description. There you can fill out the form and I will help you for free. I will help you find an office that is close to you. This is super important because if you just wake up a lazy eye, <laughs> you can get really bad double vision. So this video is more geared towards people who are already in vision therapy. And this is for when you're doing those eye exercises and you just, you can tell that your eyes are not equal. You can tell that you're, this is my strong eye, this is my weak eye. So you're gonna see me point to my eyes throughout this. You can tell and feel that your strong guy is doing 90% of the heavy lifting and your weak guy is just really not. So these are 10 techniques that you can use in those moments while you're doing the Brock string, while you're looking at a, you know, 3D Vectogram or just different exercises that maybe you're doing with the red and green glasses. These are ways to wake up that weak eye and get it with the program. Okay. So this isn't like a start to finish approach for someone who's never done vision therapy. This is for when you're in vision therapy in the middle of an eye exercise. Yeah, are we clear? Don't get double vision on my account. I'm not interested in that because it sounds horrible. All right, now on to the tips. These tips can be used in conjunction with any vision therapy exercise. I'm just gonna use this quoit as an example. Okay, it's not a quoit, it's a gem. Um, with the glasses on, it should look like it's floating. And sometimes I'm just not getting the depth and I can just feel that my, my bad eye isn't working. So that's the situation that we're gonna pretend we're in. A lot of you have experienced this and here's some things that I try, okay? First, I start tapping. I start tapping all around that eye. It's like, hello, muscles, are you there? So this does a couple things. It kind of is making those muscles think a little bit and you're getting some peripheral, right? You've got this hand in your periphery. So tapping the eye, that's first, always first, super easy. Um, another one that I do is on the same side of my weak eye, I actually snap my finger by that ear. And what that does is it's starting to engage your auditory system as well. The more systems you can try to get integrated into this process, the more that crossover between all those neural pathways is gonna happen. So snap in this ear, we'll do this with a Brock string too. And it's crazy, I'll like snap and then all of a sudden the other string becomes solid instead of blurry, it's wild, okay? So use auditory as much as possible. Um, another version of auditory is I'll tap on the screen and that's that's more to help with depth in general, not necessarily the lazy eye. <clears throat> all right, another one, speaking of integrating other systems of the body, you could stand on a balance board, you could stand on a trampoline, you could stand with your feet toe to toe, Again, there's just, you're incorporating this balance and, and the more you get your body thinking about like where it is in space and you're, it's going to make your peripheral vision engage and that's going to help engage that weak eye. <clears throat> okay, this is a wild one. Um, I did this one time when I was in a, I didn't. All right, this next one is maybe one you haven't heard before. Totally works for me like a dream. It's crazy. I had the, a vision therapist do this to me one time in an appointment and it was crazy the effect it had. So I, you put one arm, your arms down to your sides and the vision therapist or whoever you have at home that can help you 
presses down on one shoulder and you're pressing against it. So they're pressing down, you're pressing up. So you've got this like opposite motion going. You're gonna do the same thing at your side so that if it's your right shoulder, you're gonna also do with your left hand and you're gonna push that hand down and your home helper is gonna push that hand up. So it's kind of like this like squeezing and you're pushing opposite of their hands. I asked my husband who's a physical therapist, like why does this, why is this magical? And he's like, I don't know. And he like gave some like crazy response about like stuff and I can't remember, but it works. So just give it a try. Another option is to use glasses with prism. So this can be done in a lot of different ways. You can use yoked prism, which is something that you might use in office. For me, if I used base up, Base, base up and it shifted everything down that helped me and and that can be a lot a true with a lot of people with esotropia if you move it into the down gaze it's helpful or move it up so that can help kind of engage that second eye so that's something that would have to be tried in office where you have access to those yoked prisms but it's usually a very small amount like a 0.5 or a 1 or if your doctor has prescribed you glasses for that have prism you could try it with or without the prism. Sometimes that can affect that weak eye and help it be more engaged. Another option that I love, especially when we're talking about like the Brock string or activities where each eye is seeing something different, so like an anti-suppression type activity, is I cover my strong eye, so I'm only looking with my weak eye. And this is same with Lester. So any of those activities where basically both eyes have to be on and you're trying to get like a mixture or fusion or getting things lined up. So you cover your strong eye, see what it looks like with your weak eye, and then I'll like slowly, very slowly, remove my hand from my strong eye like half at a time like this, or like I'll, I'll have my fingers like this so I can kind of see through my finger, but not all the way. And, and then it's like slowly letting my strong eye come in. So I start with the weak eye where I know it's working and then just kind of slowly let the, that stronger eye come in. There's different types of like filters and different glasses, like pinhole glasses or whatever that I've never used those, but I think it's kind of the same concept. I just, when I'm doing the Brock string, I don't always have those available, but my hand's always there. So I always cover my eye and that's a really great, great way to do it. Another one is to wiggle your fingers on the side of that periphery. So this one kind of goes with the next one. So I'll close again, close my strong eye and I'll say, okay, what's something I can see peripherally? I, okay, I can see this painting I have on my wall. And if I only use my strong eye, I definitely cannot see that painting. So you're picking something in the periphery of your weak eye that you know your strong eye can't see and then being aware of it. So while I'm doing that exercise, I'm I'm looking at this coit. Sorry, Jen, coit's a different version, but you guys really probably don't care. I'm looking at this, looking at this, and making sure I can see that painting or my fingers, right? Again, if I only use my strong eye, I can't see those fingers wiggling. And so that helps me engage the periphery of my weak eye, which is in turn going to help me engage like the central part of my weaker eye. So getting that periphery of the weak eye turned on. So the wiggling fingers, picking an object peripherally, both of those are gonna work. Sometimes you might be using both eyes and you just don't know if you are. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced self-doubt when doing a vision therapy exercise and you're like, I don't think I'm actually using both eyes. I'm probably only using one eye. And you like get a complex about it. If this happens to you, welcome to the club. You're one of us, like we all do that. So one of my favorites to do, and this is going to help you wake up that weak eye and help you know if it's on or not, is I'm doing an exercise and I just put something right in this front area, right in front of my, kind of by my mouth almost, like maybe like four or five inches in front of my mouth. Who knows how much it is actually that far. And so when I'm looking at this quite vectogram, we'll say it's floating right here, and I have my finger here, I can actually see two fingers out of my periphery, right? So I'm looking, my eyes are pointed out front and my finger's here and there are two fingers. Now, if I look at my finger, there should only be one. But when I look away from my finger, there's two. This is called physiological diplopia. So you can do this with, I like to do it with a pen sometimes. I can hold a pen here. And if I'm looking in the distance or looking out at this, 
I can see two pins and one object. So if you're seeing two in your periphery, that means both eyes are turned on because there's one image of the pen from your left eye, one image of the pen from your right eye, and you're seeing both of those simultaneously. So that's another really great way to make sure that that right eye is working is to have that, that suppression check, I guess, is what you would call that. So I use that all the time. I'll use it when I'm watching TV at night. If I'm like, am I only using my left eye? And I'll hurry and throw up my finger and be like, no, I got two of them. All right, we're good. Um, when I'm doing a vectorgram and I'm like, okay, I wanna make sure that right eye is really cued in. All right, let's put the finger up here. I'll use a remote. When I'm watching a 3D movie, I, I take the remote and I hold it right here in front of my face. So all of these things are going to help you get that left eye. And part of that is getting it engaged in the periphery and then it's going to naturally start working more in the central. Those are your tips. This is definitely not a comprehensive list. These are things that I've tried that have really helped me as I've gone through vision therapy. If you have extra things that have worked for you, please put them in the comments. We would love to hear about it. Be sure to go sign up for the Strabismus Support Community over at learn.strabismussolutions.com and we will see you in the next video.